let me just tell you a little bit about me. I'm from Des Moines. I live in Oakland, California. I love to be on the water on a kayak. I have a 27 year old daughter, Bennett. Her dog bug is, you know, I have to babysit the dog sometimes. <laughs> so it's mine too. And I have two cats. So I'm a real person. My book was launched on March 22nd and it was number one on barnesandnoble.com. Number one out of all books for one day. That was weird, but cool. I was number one of 10 Amazon categories and I'm still number one on a few of those. I think it's five months later. Sometimes I go to two, sometimes it kind of vacillates. I spent four years writing this book, but also researching how to write, publish and market a book and turning over all the stones and the antiquated publishing industry, which is in, I don't know if it's in the middle or the beginning of disruption. It's certainly not at the end, but so you guys don't have to go through that gauntlet. I actually learned a lot from this group. So thanks to you guys for the last couple of years of learning. I had two agents. I had a traditional book deal. I turned it down. I know quite a bit about hybrid publishing, professional publishing, self-publishing. My book has won seven literary awards so far. And yeah, I'm saying this to boast and I'm very proud, but it's a snapshot of what could be possible for you and what I hope you guys get to enjoy. This is the overview of my monster master marketing plan. I called it a monster at the beginning because it was so big. And I want to tell you, it really disabled me toward the end of my journey. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't have done everything that I did, but I'm glad I did so I can teach it. With each marketing element, I really highly suggest that you define your goals and KPIs to be able to track their efficiency and efficacy. If you don't define them, of course, you all know you can't possibly know what worked and what didn't. Somebody's asking me to help them market their book right now. And I'm asking them questions. What is your goal? What is your target audience? If you don't know those, you're just spraying and praying and it's not going to turn out well. I created a spreadsheet that if you want it, you can email me and I'll send it to you. It was very helpful for me to keep track of those ROIs. I also kept a tight agenda and met with my team. So nothing fell through the cracks. I ran it just like I run my business entire productions almost on the EOS traction feel, but some of my targets, and these may not be your targets work for this marketing element. How many books am I trying to sell? How many email opt-ins am I trying to receive? How many speaking gigs am I going to book? Is this part of the best seller strategy? And then I have the execution date, response, who's responsible, target outcome, budget priority. I'm probably preaching to the choir, but in case I'm not, I wanted you to know, please do not create a marketing plan until you have some of this stuff done. These are not in order of importance or order of what has really worked. Again, I've only been doing this for five months, so... I don't know the full outcome of everything yet. I will also say, I think I missed this part. I was also on the Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestseller list, which instantly pops me up into this place, whether it's true or not, of more authority. Advanced Reader Team is sometimes referred to as ARC, which stands for Advanced Reader Copy. And the general synopsis is you're going to ask people, your community, your email list, your friends, your family, however, your friends and family are likely not to participate in any of this. They're not going to buy your book. They're not going to review it. Yes. In general, some might, but the majority won't. And that seemed very abrasive at first, but I'm experiencing that too. Now I wrote a memoir, which included some of the stories of some of these people who may not be incredibly happy that they're in my book. So that could be it. You ask them to read an advanced copy of your book. You would email a PDF of it or via NetGalley. There are different companies that do this. Then you ask them to buy the digital version during the pre-sale and the first week of sale for 99 cents so that they're a verified buyer on Amazon. Then you're going to ask them 
before they even say, yes, we're going to do this, you're going to ask them for their commitment to write a review on Amazon during the first week of sales. The number of reviews that you have really correlate with the perception of how successful your book is, but also that nasty Amazon algorithm for suggesting like books. You can bump up the price of your digital or your Kindle or whatever version after about the first eight days of your release. Book Sirens, NetGalley, Facebook groups, your email list, your social media, those are places to source. And I'm going to show you an example. Now, I didn't know who this person was before she started launching a book. Evidently, she's really famous in the makeup industry, Jamie Kern Lima. Now, I hadn't seen any of her makeup anywhere, but evidently she was huge on QVC. So I joined her advanced reader team to find out what she was doing. And let me tell you, she put a lot of money behind this whole launch. And I heard through the an underground grapevine that she spent almost $3 million promoting her book. You think, why would anybody do that, right? And I'm going to assume, because of what I've seen her do, is that she wants to get on stages. She sold her company for a billion dollars, woohoo, so she could afford it. This isn't verbatim, I'm not sure for sure, but I hear that she spent a million dollars to get on Tony Robbins stage and have him present her in her book. She did this advanced reader team via Facebook community. She did live events in the Facebook, Facebook Live. She did Q and A's. She did video messaging to us. And she has, I looked, five over 5,000 people in this program. She used the NetGalley service to get the manuscript out to us. Now I found that a little bit complicated as an end user. And I didn't use that for my book launch because of that. And of course, this is not just the result of the advanced reader team is 4,168 reviews on Amazon. She's also a New York Times bestseller. She was also published professionally, but great ways to kick off to start reviews. It's so important. You should aim for at least 30 for proof of authority, social proof. I'm only at 47 right now. So if you've read my book, could you please write a review? And then it's great to pull from for repurposing on social media. I have my team of virtual assistants taking all of the reviews and repurposing into the beautiful social media ads. Okay, here's the next, the number two, but again, not in order of importance, is pre-order sales. So you wanna make sure your book is up on Amazon and ready and any other platform. Here's a weird thing that happened to me. I was not prepared for this. It was number one in three different categories during the pre-sale. And it remains in those same three categories today. So I suggest you do at least two weeks before your launch of pre-sales. You're gonna prime the pump, ask people to buy your book. It's 99 cents. It's kind of impossible that somebody wouldn't invest that in your success. So this is a good way to get your numbers up and it kickstarts your campaign. You can see here, I'm number one over Miles Davis in a guitar scales book. Now, how important is that? It's really perception, right? Perception is reality. Amazon categories. If you're not a number one best-selling author on Amazon, then that is the lowest lift you could possibly do. And it's all about categories. And I think I have this in here somewhere, but I just want to make sure in case I don't, you are allotted two categories on Amazon, but you can ask for eight more. So you're going to look for those niche subcategories to put your book in. And you literally, I am not kidding you. And it depends on who else is using those categories at the time, could sell two or three books and be an Amazon number one bestseller. Just let that set in for a minute. Okay, publicity. I really researched this really deeply and I ended up not hiring my own publicist, but the cost of hiring a publicist, as you probably know, is three to $12,000 a month with an at least three month minimum, preferably five or more. 
I can send you a list of options and people that I spoke to. Of course, it wouldn't be an experience share of using them because I did not. They'll pitch to local and national publications, but they need a three month or more lead for those major publications and you're fighting with celebrities. Well, you're fighting against them to get your book seen. So it is not probably gonna happen. Now, if you're writing a subject matter, how-to book about business, then like Inc, Entrepreneur, Fast Company, those companies, of course, you're not fighting as much with celebrities, but who is on the cover of every Entrepreneur magazine these days? I don't know what Jason Pfeiffer is doing over there, but for the last two years, it's been a celebrity. I'm, it might be working for them. Again, it's great for repurposing the placements that you get, but it doesn't really move a lot of books. Now, if anybody is on this call where being on Good Morning America or the Today Show or uh, national media has moved books of more than 1,000, can you put it in the chat? I'm sure it happens, but it's unlikely. You really need to build relationships with these people in the media, and that takes a long time. And from what I can tell, I've even been told by a professional publicist that what I'm doing internally is what they would be doing and they couldn't really do better. That was a wake up call. You can create a one sheet that shows you as an expert, but here's the key. You do not want your one sheet to be about your book when submitting to the media. They wanna see you as an expert in your field and somewhere in there that you have a book. Pretty much no one, unless you're Glennon Doyle, or a really big name in, in writing. Nobody wants to just have you on the show about your book. I'm using these broad sweeping terms, but also you can join Forbes Business Council. And I actually get to be the caddy of Forbes Business Council for their authors subgroup, which I'm very proud of. And I hope that I do as good of a job as Caddy has. You can also do Entrepreneur Magazine. These are pay to play writing influencing opportunities. They book you on some podcasts, but there are other agencies that do this. Again, I did this all in house with my internal team, virtual assistants, and some ancillary help. The biggest deal about pitching to the media that I'd like to share with you is to write a pitch letter or a pitch note, a very short, concise why you're absolutely the best person to be on that segment and show them why you know that you'd be good. That means you have to actually know their show or their publication intimately and don't send them a press release. It's kind of a rookie move. You can send it as an attachment with the pitch. I wouldn't even refer to it. Like the press releases below, they don't read them. And I can show you how to do the one sheets or send you mine if you want an example. Here's another example of some of the publicity that we got on our own. This is from Enterprising Women. I did a summit, which is really interesting. I'm not sure I would suggest it for all of you because you're probably a little more savvy and elevated in your career. I did this summit where my communication specialist met with 75 different producers of national shows, and you had two minutes to pitch them. Many podcasters and also writers from different publications. And we landed about 85% of those pitches. We studied how to do it. And instead of me doing it, which a lot of people were doing on their own, she did it for me and it was more powerful. We created a list of targets outside of that to pitch to. And, and these are all things publicists should be doing. And a publicist could help you with a book tour. So bookstores and other reading appearances. I have not done too many bookstore appearances because of the pandemic. And really you should focus on the bookstores that are in your region that know you and that you likely will have people walk in and ask for your book. We're going to move on to podcast guesting. I was on over 100 podcasts in the last four months for my book launch. Don't suggest you do that many. 
it was really hard on me. And I had to start saying no at a certain point, but you're reaching other people's audiences. And you can search on listennotes.com for the exact kind of podcast. You can find out how many podcasts the podcaster has done. Are they regular? Are they weekly? If they've allowed their listen note score to show, you can see if it's in the top five, 10%. I'm now trying to do only podcasts that are in the top 2%. So again, you can hire a general podcast pitch and agency, or you can have a virtual assistant do it. I have a canned email with the one sheet and I'm surprised at how many people said yes, really easy yeses. I would suggest going with, of course, the demographic of what you're writing about. But if you're writing a book like a memoir or fiction or something, go for podcasts where book readers actually are listening. And that's something that I think we forget about is, you know, when we're plastering social media, that's not necessarily where bookworms are living. You know, it's not exactly the target demographic. Social media, this is a non, you know, no brainer, but you should create a 12 month plan before your book is launched. This is not a one to three month, you know, engagement. It shouldn't be. And you'll continue to sprinkle in organic posts and stories and reels if you can. And if you're like super brave, you could TikTok it. Showcase, you can showcase your bestseller statuses, announce awards that have been won. And who's going to do this for you? Please don't do this by yourself unless like this is your hobby and you really love it or this is your vocation. Again, virtual assistants. And I can help you with that. There are some EO members that have virtual assistant companies. I actually use one out of Arizona that I have five from. So you can see here are some examples of my social media and you have to just keep it consistent. And there are a lot of applications that can help you with that. One of them that I've talked to you guys about a long time ago, which I wanna bring up again is lately.ai. We re repurpose every podcast or interview that I do, and we can schedule those bits from the interview over 12 months with one click. So that's how you get around, you know, the heavy work of doing it yourself. Okay. Has, I want to just, let's see in the chat. Has anyone seen this trailer or has anyone not seen it? I'm going to play you a little bit of it specifically because an EO members company helped me with it. And I'll talk to you about what I did with it. Oh, that did not work. Maybe it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. I don't know why. I will send you guys out the link. It's beautiful. And we have used it in so many different ways and it's really grabbing the attention of people. Someone that saw it yesterday, and I don't know this person, wrote, hold on, I'll tell you, because this is the impact it can have. Uh, something like, thank you for the B12 shot of adrenaline and enticement. I'm so excited to read your book after seeing the trailer. And here's another one. And again, I can send you my slides, but it's a book trailer. It's just like a movie trailer, short video or teaser that introduces the book in a way that makes people want to read it. If done correctly, using this trailer can help improve your online presence and allow you to read new readers. You can't just source from your own pot. It makes people excited about reading the book. It raises curiosity. It makes you look possibly better than you are if you're me. And you can do it yourself, absolutely. You can hire a studio to do it like I did. And I really had a heavy lift in the creative with this, but they pulled together all these different animators, illustrators, music, and such. You can also source all of these people on Upwork or Fiverr, et cetera, et cetera. How much did mine cost? Man, I wish I could play it for you so you could see the value. Does anyone wanna guess how much mine cost? 
I'm going to wait for one person to say how much they think it costs, but you can't see it. It was $7,000. And honestly, for what that trailer is, it is valued at much more. So I don't know what Nick was thinking, but, and I don't know how much Trevor Noah's was. Strategic partnerships and sponsors. This resulted in in-kind sponsorships for me from Modern Luxury San Francisco Magazine at a, wait for it, $30,000 advertising trade for both online and magazine. And this was not in the deal, but I found out when the magazine published that the publisher did a whole feature on me in his publisher's note. We also had another sponsor called All Seated Expo. They hosted my book launch summit. And so we made a whole deck and, oh wait, I have the deck here. You guys steal the deck, just use it as a blueprint if you want. Of course you have to change the data, but the target is a large corporation that you can name in the book or have alliances with. You'll see in some other things that we used a step and repeat and had their logos everywhere for the San Francisco magazine. They brought in 200 magazines for takeaways for the guests that came away from my book launch in person. So to the left of the screen, you've got to read this book. That's the full page ad that ran in their magazine. They also did a bunch of emails and actually now, and this isn't something I paid for, they're going to do a two page story on me in the fall. So it's great to really get in there and dig in and create those relationships. Okay, Next. So saying, while oh. reading your book, I literally could not put it down. It's one of those books where, you know, it's way past my bedtime. I should be going to sleep, but I'm still up reading it because I wanted to see what's going to happen next. The story is compelling. It's inspirational. And you're writing sensationally good. So I'm really glad to be helping you get awareness of this book out there. I'm really recommending everybody read it. Okay. That's amazing. This is Jack Canfield from Chicken Soup of the Soul for the Soul, which is a $1 billion franchise today. And he was so kind to do an endorsement for my book. Now, endorsements are great for the back of the book, but if you use it in every single way you can through social media, dripping it throughout the year, I just posted something on social media, another clip that Jack says, this is the most amazing book. I can see that you're going to sell a million. I can see it as a TV show or a movie. That stirred up so much like frenzy. And if you don't like make the ask, you're not gonna get it, right? So I highly suggest you get people that are in your corner that have an audience. Uh, so this is for your book, but also for social media and marketing forward. All right. This is, we're going to spend a little time on this influencer campaign. I'm going to tell you step-by-step step how to do it. And a team called NGNG Enterprises helped me facilitate this, not my virtual assistants, not my inner team. And they were excellent, but you can also do it yourself, but you probably shouldn't. You should have somebody do it, whether it's your virtual assistants or a team like NGNG. So you're going to make a list of at least 100 people that are influential within your align group, in alignment with your book message. They have an audience. And even if they have a thousand people in their audience, but they're engaged, that's fine and would be willing to promote your book. And I'm going to send you guys this link for the video of my personal ask. And I'm going to look at the Jabez. I can't remember. Jabez wasn't on my, I can't see anyone on the call that was on my team, but I had 75 people do this for me. And what this is, is I'm going to tell you here. So you can see this is Daniel Shemtab from EOLA. He was one of my influencers. He has a really big following, especially since winning all of those food truck race competitions, but you're going to appeal to them about why the book's important to you, why it will resonate with that person's community. And if you have a philanthropic arm to it, why it's meaningful to you. So for me, a portion of the proceeds from my speaking 
and my book sales, because honestly, book sales isn't going to result in a whole lot of money, go to Covenant House, which is a really important endeavor and platform for me, because it's similar to the homeless shelter that I was dropped off slash dumped at on Christmas Day when I was 16. Then you're going to create a form to ask them which elements they're willing to do for you. And this is brilliant because it gives you an idea of what they're going to do for you, but then it also gives you an opportunity to hold them accountable because they said, yes, I'll do this one thing. I'm not sure if you can see, can you see the various things clearly? I think it's big enough. And then the next thing you're going to do is track it on a spreadsheet. Here's the spreadsheet. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you the template. So if you wanted to do it yourself, you can. And it's right here in the chat. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. And this team, they did all the email interactions with these people. Now that's a little, you know, tentative, right? Like if I have a relationship with you, do you wanna be hearing from this other team or a virtual assistant? So you have to be really careful about how you craft the message that this team is sending out. This is some of the data that is on a website made just for the influencers. It is not on a link that anyone going to my website or searching for can access, but I'm giving it to you here. So this is what my influencers received. So they got instructions for the week before the launch date, post-launch. And then, you know, they can choose these different things and get more information. They can download social media posts so they don't have to make their own. They can repurpose it. There's email swipe files, there's graphics, and it just really hand holds them. It was pretty powerful, but I went a little overboard as I'll show you here in a minute. And then ultimately you're gonna send them the book or if you're like me and over the top, you're gonna to send them an influencer gift box. This is actually Amber of the NGNG Enterprises Group holding my book. And then the focus is on pre-launch and the launch week. So you're gonna send it out to them about two to four weeks before that launch, that's ideal. So in your publishing, timeline, you have to make sure that you have books on hand in time to send these out to your influencers. I had a little kerfuffle with this, but we made it happen. This gives them time to create social media posts of their own and videos and actually read the book, hopefully, and prepare a review. And then you're going to ask them to write a review. So make sure you track everything in the spreadsheet so you can remind those who haven't done it to review. If you're working with like really high powered people, writing a review may not be top of mind. Now I didn't do this, but I've heard of other people writing the review for these people and asking them for their permission to post it. If that's what you wanna do, cool. So here is an example. And Caddy said she's gonna send these links to everyone of one of my influencers opening their influencer box. And here's the next lesson on what that damn box was. And again, let's see, I wanna make, yeah. Again, this is my, when you go to the influencer page on my website, everyone gets to see each other. So it's like just such great power. And some people want to be introduced to each other. So it's like, you're already building this tiny little community and introducing your people to each other. I had a two-time Olympic gold medalist, various authors, people that led in the event industry, people from the Babson 10 KSB program I did, people from Scaling Up. And here's the crazy box that I created. So I had a, a box designed. It's not a typical box that it's a special size. So we did everything from scratch and the contents were as follows. The paperback book, honestly, because there was a cardboard chart shortage and it was hard to get hardback books in time. Then I had this 14 karat gold plated necklace custom made that says relentless with my own handwriting. 
two stamped postcards so that people could send them out to other people. I know you couldn't see that, but you can see it in the picture there. A pen, my memoir Sherpa guidebook for a course that I was inviting them to come to for free, which was $3,500 in value, and a letter from me explaining how important it is for this book for me asking them what to do. You have to ask for the sale, ask them, post on social media, tell them you want them to send it to your email. And just a note, you can send these out for first class. This cost about, I think it was about $16 average to send this out first class and it's about $4 media mail. Here is NGNG's sample their box is smaller a little more concise they it's not all the bells and whistles and you might want to go this route it might save your sanity <laughs> please consider your sanity when creating your marketing plan oh mark yes you were an influencer it was wonderful and triggered so mark do you remember those malted milk balls did you eat them yourself they were like delicious. I did, and they were tasty. <laughs> yeah, so those were pan-crafted malted milk balls that I, they weren't Whoppers. And so I spent a lot of money. The retail value of all the boxes in total was $25,000. And I'm happy to send you all of the people, places, ordering you know, websites if you're interested to do that so you don't have to do your own work. The next marketing event is a book launch summit. We held my launch summit on a platform called Expo, which you'll remember was one of my sponsors. The platform that we used had two different venues that were totally decked out is almost as if you were at the venue in person, but you just didn't have your feet on the ground. And that platform, if you were to ask Expo to use it for yours, is like 50 or $60,000. So it packed a punch, but of course, did I spend that? No, they became a sponsor. And then I invited seven speakers, including me and one from the nonprofit Covenant House. I had them speak for 10 minutes each on the relentless pursuit of their dreams and goals. We had entertainment and interactive activities like a photo booth, caricature artist, magician. Now this is my core business. I plan and execute high-end corporate events, mostly in person, but because of the pandemic virtually. So please do not think that this is something that you can do easily, but you can do it on Zoom or Google Meet or Microsoft Teams and you don't have to do it in the metaverse. However, that was a buzzword that really attracted people that wanted to see something on the metaverse. And it was really cool. The speeches were incredibly impactful. And I just put a link to the summit. It was completely recorded. And you can see, I think I had a couple of EO members. I had, well, Finney and Kelly, I think is the only one that was there. So I can talk to you more about that, but I'm going to move on because we're edging up on time. Then you could do a, a live book launch event. And I really suggest you do something that isn't expected. So book launch events are usually, you know, kind of a quiet NPR kind of feeling thing where you come into the auditorium and then someone interviews you and then the author stands up and reads excerpts. I mean, that's old school and it can work and it may work and might be the perfect thing for you, but this was the perfect thing for me. And I have a feeling with some zany people on this call, it might be the one for you. It was over the top, but of course, being my core business in the event and entertainment production, we had to do it. We also repurposed it as a marketing event for entire productions. We didn't say that was what it was, but because of all the lighting and the catering and the champagne, it came off as such. So we rented the SF MoMA Theater and Atrium. I got an insane deal, but if you were to pay for it, it would have been $25,000. But the way that people perceived the event, if you've been to the San Francisco MoMA, you'll know it is very ostentatious for an author to be doing a launch event there. So I performed with my band on the stage of the auditorium 
And some of you may have seen this, but I do an experiential keynote. So it's part keynote, part reading of book excerpts, and part performing the songs that I have recorded on over seven CDs woven all together. And I made sure it was no longer than one hour. And then we all left that theater in through the back door into the atrium, this grand atrium where we had aerialists, catering, step and repeat, a photographer, a painted model. And here is the sizzle reel, which I will, let's see, here's the performance if you wanna watch it. Again, I want you to watch these things to consider how it, you may do it. Of course, if you wanna tell me how amazing it was or if, I, if you have any criticism, <laughs> constructive, let me know. And then here's the sizzle reel that we did, which was so good for my business. Okay, the next thing is little free libraries. Most people in major cities in America have these. And there's actually a website, which I'll stick in the chat. See, I should have had my virtual assistant here to do this for me. It has a map and directory of all the little libraries. So you can drop your book in there for awareness and discoverability. You never know who walks by there and takes them. And then I had my virtual, I had a local assistant go around Alameda and some parts of Oakland and dropped a book in every single one. And at every single one, she took a photo of my book around it. And then we put it in our local community Facebook group. And that stirred up excitement. And I led everyone to the Book Inc on Park Street in Alameda and said, listen, if you didn't find it in your little library, you can find it here. Then you can post these images on social media, send them in via email, post them in the groups and communities that are outside of your local community. And the next one, which really should be at the beginning. So just mental note, make sure that you get a Kirkus review and a Publishers Weekly review of your book. And Publishers Weekly reviews for non-traditional publishers is called Book Life. And I don't have a link for you, but I can send it to you if you email me. And let me just stick my email in here. So you guys might have different emails for me, but I answer to them all. These are the two industry gold standards. If you get a good review from Kirkus or Publishers Weekly, it's kind of like winning the Grammy or the Oscar and gives you a check mark that you're legitimate. And you can see on my image under the one on the right, there's a little lightning bolt, that's like the most amazing thing you can get in Publishers Weekly. So when you submit your books to that, this is the time to go, oh gosh, I hope they like it. And then of course, put that on your Amazon and all of the other digital marketing pages that you have. Bulk sales. So this is something that you can do to drive engagement and get people to buy more books than just one. So you would create tiers of various bulk buys and add bonuses attached to them. And it takes some tracking and someone to pay attention and fulfill these orders. It's great if you have a large and engaged audience. I wouldn't really consider it if you don't. The buyer can purchase on Amazon and then comes, goes back to the site and puts it into your website, the number and order of proof of payment I know that didn't make too much sense, but you can see it here on my book page. So they're telling you, hey, I bought this amount of books. Gary V actually did this with his book launch and was issuing tokens for his NFTs. So here are some of the things I offered. And here is the continuation. So you can see here, this was by five. And then there were a couple of other categories. And then we really pumped it up. 300, 200, 100. I have asked one very wealthy benefactor of mine if she would consider buying 25,000 copies of my book. Now, why the heck would she do that? For me, we decided, she and I, that she could, she works with a nonprofit 
uh, put her stamp of the nonprofit in it and we would donate it to homeless shelters and things like that to support Covenant House, but also her nonprofit. That deal has not gone through. I will let you know if it does. Now, how do we make those count on book sales? Because I could be on Wall Street Journal and USA Today again. Now, those two lists though, really rely on sales from different portals. So you can't just buy 8,000 of your own books and call it a day and, being, and get on those lists. Just note to self, someone actually recently spent $300,000 buying their own books, assuming that they would hit the list. They didn't even hit number one on Amazon. Let that sink in for a minute. This is recent, like in the last two weeks. And you can use sources like Porchlight. You could fulfill your own Amazon. Another way to do it, and again, this takes some work, is you can ask like Books Inc. and Barnes and Noble, hey, I want to run 2,000, 3,000 books through you, and I'll pay you know the wholesale price, and they'll just scan your book. It's it works but it's not an authentic, legitimate way to get your numbers up. But I just wanted to tell you all the things. Here's Rebecca Minkoff. I really loved hers and she's famous, right? So you can spend a day with her, do a behind the scenes. I think her book promotion was really good. I do not know how it served her though. The next thing is book awards. So you heard me say at the beginning, I have seven literary awards now. In a boasting moment, the first one I ever won was from the London Book Festival. And I got an email from them and it said, you know, check this, click this link and see, you know, who the winners were. I almost deleted that email because it looks so generic. And I thought, well, if I'm going to win an award, they're going to tell me. Well, they didn't. So I... Jabez, it sounds like a phishing email. It did look like one, but I clicked the link and my book not only won in a category, but they chose it as overall of all books. And I also won in a category. I sent them an email and I'm like, are you sure? Like, is this like, am I reading this right? And they're like, yes, ma'am, you won with highest honors. So that was interesting. And I use... I'm going to put this in the chat. I use this service and I have my VAs entering my book for me. There are different levels. You can do a free version, basic one, in intermediate. And I did the top one, but then I realized what they're doing is they're charging you $150 each application, regardless of what that book contest fee is. And they range from about $35 to $150 to enter. So wouldn't it be amazing if you could like say, please welcome Brooke Lively, Brooke Boo Lively, an award-winning best-selling author of the book. And I think you have a book. So, you know, you could enter your name there, but it's so powerful. All right, moving right along. This is something that was really interesting to me, the Goodreads giveaway campaign. Now, there are many options within Goodreads that you can do, and this is one I chose. I chose the premium option, so I spent $600. And what you do is you decide how many books you want to offer. I think I chose 30, so I'm gonna give away 30 books. Then Goodreads creates a campaign for their community, for all their subscribers and announces a giveaway and then people sign up. And I had no idea how many people would sign up. So I was like shooting, you know, spraying and praying, but it actually turned out well. You can promote the giveaway within social media and email on your own as well, outside of what Goodreads does. They let you create your own graphics. And when the campaign ends in 30 days, you get a list of those who won and you have to send them the book. So now you don't have their email address, but you have their mailing address. You send them the book. And if you're smart, you send them something else special, not just like, here's your book, like an Amazon delivery. But here's where a lot of value comes in. All of the other people 
that didn't win gets an email thanking them and telling them, sorry, you didn't win this time. And now the book, my book is on their bookshelf, their digital bookshelf within Goodreads. And a lot of people put books on their bookshelf in Goodreads. And when they're done reading one, they'll go to the next one. And so it's automatically placed there. They don't actually have to do anything, but they understand that if they, if they go into this contest, that it's going to go on their bookshelf. I believe they could remove it, but that is kind of a high barrier. So, and then, hold on, I'm going to send you the link to exactly where to go here. And then over the course of a year or even two, people are going to be discovering your book. And it's likely somebody wouldn't enter to win if they weren't interested in your book. And I think I had 5,000 people opt in for this, if you're wondering on that number. BookBub promotions. I am not recommending this. We did a small campaign and it didn't really work for me. So I can't tell you if really worth investing in. So there's four categories, BookBub ads, featured deals, new releases for less, and Chirp audiobook deals. Now, I have a couple more that I can go over, but it's 10 minutes too, and I think we should go to Q&A. What do you think? Agreed. Awesome. Awesome. Truly. Oh, gosh, I'm exhausted just listening to everything. Martin, yeah. thank you for the applause. And Rodolfo. Really fantastic. Great job, Natasha. That was excellent. Yeah, really excellent. I can't wait Great to watch the recording so I can pick up on some of the things that I missed because I going to say that's a lot of information in a short period of time. I Thank worked you. hard on this for you. Like this meant a lot to me to share with you guys. And I got goose bumble, uh, pimples here. Thank you for appreciating it. Okay. What can I say? What can Thank I you. So Natasha, I'm curious. There's a bunch of questions here. I'll start with them. I'm just curious. What if you've already launched your book? What if it's been out? Like what? yours? Yeah, like mine, it's been out for a year. And the doesn't matter, you know what, Patty, you know, mm -hmm. the people that don't know you're about your book don't know about your book. They don't know when it was released. They're not going to be going, huh, is this book old? They're not going to flip it over and try to find the, or open the page. Okay. Don't let that stop you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's go into some of the questions here. I know you answered a few of them as you were going along. But David, your question was, I want to learn how. I think Natasha touched upon quite a few of the hows, but if she didn't, please unmute yourself and ask away. Martin wants to know, how, why did you turn down the traditional book deal? Oh. What was um, the reason behind that? Okay. For me specifically, when I saw the numbers, the advance, and they taking the majority of the intellectual property. For me, it didn't make sense because I'm doing so many things with the book, including lies. it's being optioned for a TV show or movie. And if they owned the rights to it, they're gonna getting the lion's share of it, as well as the courses and various things that I'm gonna be doing with it long-term. As an entrepreneur, me as an entrepreneur, I didn't want to take the deal, but I wanted to be offered one. And I wanted to find out the intricacies of that world. And honestly, when I first started writing it, I thought I had a book agent who published really big books for like Maria Shriver and Mary Tyler Moore and like all these big people. And I was like, I'm going to be famous. Oh no, that's not how it works. <laughs> Because even if I landed on a big four publisher, I'm a small fish and it would be a minor miracle if anything grand happened with it. <coughs> and I didn't need an advance. That. Someone wants to know if the book review sites, Kirkus and those Publishers Weekly, are they more, I, I think I'm answering it myself, they're not more technical focused because yours is a memoir, so... I think they cover all genres. I don't know. I absolutely don't know. 
Yeah, I think it, it, given what your genre is and you were able to do that, so I think that answers that question. Do you want to talk a little bit about Memoir Sherpa Sharp, real quick before we- Oh, I'd love to. Time? You might be able to tell this has become a passion of mine. So I'm now teaching mostly entrepreneurs how to write, figure out the publishing path that's right for them for this book, even if you've published before or you might publish differently in the future and then how to market it to a bestseller status if that's what you want to do with it. I am really passionate about getting your story, your life story, your lessons, your vulnerable spots out into the world for people to be impacted by it. I have not read or I have not written yet a subject matter book, which I will do. So yes, you could take Memoir Sherpa and apply it to writing a how-to book, like how to scale and grow your business by 50% or more, but I'm not an expert at that yet. So really, if you have an incredible story to share, which you likely do, I would love to help you through that. Beautiful, thank you so much. I think we have time for one more question. Rodolfo wants to know, how, do you, how did you map the influencers for this? How did I what? Map the influencers. Map. Rodolfo, do you want to jump into yeah, that? I need more information. Yeah. So how did you know that was the influencer you wanted? Mm. You have a very, very interesting list. So how did you choose them? How did you say, well, this one or not this one or... Well, I asked some people that didn't respond and didn't participate and that's fine, right? For whatever reason, we're just bombarded with a million ideas and opportunities. I selected a lot of people that had been on my podcast because in getting to know them in the interview, I understood that perhaps their audience might appreciate the book and everyone there has some sort of higher power influence uh, not just a regular walk of life person. And my book, since I'm an entrepreneur and I went su to such great, you know, from, it's kind of a, a emotional, financial, personal, professional rags to riches story, basically. We just call it what it is. And so that's how. And, you know, one of the people on the list sent it out to his list of 80,000 people. Now, did anyone buy it from that list. I'm not sure. And he would have probably had to have emailed them or touched them a couple more times for it to be as impactful. Thank you. Thank you. Fabulous. Ethan and anyone else, just email me or call me. I, I would love to answer your questions. Awesome. Beautiful. Lovely. Thank you Thanks. everyone so much for being here, but most of all, Natasha, thank you so much, so much information, so much research that you did. Mm -hmm. sharing all of that with us and all the, the Google Docs, everything. Thank you very much for <laughs> educating us and, and making life easier for it us. It was my sincere yeah. pleasure. Well, Natasha, thinking. thank you very much. It was a great presentation and I really enjoyed it. So. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Fantastic. Great job. Thank you so much. Yeah. Natasha, this is like behind I, the I scenes love... here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. N Natasha, I would love to contact you to talk about two things that I just came up that I think that we could do together here in Central America. So. Oh, wonderful. I sent you my cell phone and email address. Thank you. Natasha, again, thank you a thousand times. Really informative and Good. you just All have right. so much joy and exuberance. So thank you. <laughs>